Good morning, Bethesda. Thanks for the slight delay. Somebody asked us to wear name tags today, so uh, we need more tables so we can get through it a little more quickly, but I think we all appreciate a little refresher on a couple of the names, and uh, so thanks for playing along with that. We'll do it again uh, here down the road. We haven't done this in a while either. It's like after Easter, you know, you have, it's kind of like spring cleaning. You're like, oh yeah, we got to catch up on some stuff. After Easter, we realized we still have church, and so... I've got a sign-up sheet for different ways that you can help serve on Sunday mornings, um, even, even fellowship coffee hour uh, ways to serve. The youth group has stocked the freezer with pastries, so you really just have to make some coffee and, and heat up something to eat. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass uh, fellowship on this side to begin with, and then the Sunday clipboard, most of it's on the second page. I'm going to pass this on this side. We'll see if they make it all the way around by the end of the hour. If not, we'll do it again next week. That's fine. We'll put all these numbers in the computer so that when Breeze asks you to sign up for something, you should see that somebody's already signed up for it. But anyway, this is a, this is a team effort here, and we appreciate uh, that. If you want to learn how to do any of these jobs for the first time or for the first time in a long time, just ask. We've got people who are happy to walk you through it or shadow if, and such. So with that... Uh, welcome to those uh, worshiping online. Uh, we're glad that you are a part of this community with us today, and, uh, and we pray that, uh, that you would know God's mercy uh, in your life. Thank you uh, for everyone who had a hand in the Easter and Holy Week services. And um, just want to point out, which I haven't done in a while, is the back cover of the bulletin has a couple of things you, you could uh, return or respond with. One is a prayer request sheet, and then one uh, on the other side of that is a contact card. So if you have anything to communicate or update prayer-wise or contact-wise, you can certainly fill it out and tear it off and put it in the offering plate later in the service. And if the prayer request is, if, I can, if it's legible and I can read it and, it's, and it doesn't say keep it private, I might even uh, lift it up in our prayers later today. So keep that in mind, please. With that, I invite you to please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter joy. Amen. Look, here is water. immersed in the promises of baptism or awaiting the promises of baptism. Let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Son, through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Raised up in Christ, we share the peace of God with one another.
You may remain standing as we sing Who You Say I Am. The words and music are here for you for the verses and chorus. Towards the end of the song, you'll, uh, you'll have the music team. We'll be singing the bridge. Uh, don't go looking for it on the next page. It's not there. So we'll sing the bridge, and then you can come and rejoin us for the chorus one more time. Who am I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me, who the sun sets free, oh, is free. has ransomed me his grace runs deep well i was a slave to sin jesus died for me yes he died for me who the sun sets free oh is free In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am who you say I am yes I am who you say I am who the sun who the sun sets free who is free grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. 
We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Psalm 133, how good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of iron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Okay, time for my youngest friends to come and meet me up here. We got a little experiment to try. Mm. Boy, that image of fine oil flowing down the beard of Aaron when uh, kindred are living in unity. I couldn't help but think about when my sons are getting along, eating a piece of pizza, and their hands have got oil just all over them, and they're all greasy, and they get along. like Just like that beard of Aaron. I love it. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good to, good to see you again. Yep. Well, welcome back. We are in the season of Easter for a few Sundays. Now, every Sunday really is the day of the resurrection. We celebrate it every week, all year long. But the next few weeks, we're going to have a few stories from the Bible about Jesus appearing to disciples, uh, and they get to see that he has defeated death. And today, we get to learn about one of my favorite disciples. His name, like mine, is Thomas. His nickname wasn't Tom, though. They called him the twin, which is kind of interesting. Maybe he had a twin. But Thomas. And Thomas wasn't there in the very first Easter. He was out doing something. I don't know. I like to think he was brave Thomas, who wasn't staying in the locked room hiding uh, uh, like the others were. But Thomas was gone, and he didn't see Jesus when he came to them on that first Easter Sunday. And so when his friends said, we saw the Lord, he's alive. Thomas says, uh, I'm going to have to touch and see for myself, or I will not believe that, right? So Thomas, even though he didn't see that Jesus was alive, he stayed around his friends, and the very next week, the very next Sunday, Jesus came back again. And he said, to, he said then what he said the first time, peace be with you. Here's my Holy Spirit. All your sins and sadnesses are forgiven. And Thomas gets a chance to see and touch Jesus. And Thomas says, wow, my Lord and my God. But Thomas got to see something. Maybe you know this. Uh, there was something about Jesus' raised, alive again body that was kind of interesting. And Thomas wanted to see them. What did Thomas want to see about the risen Jesus? Judah. The marks from the nails in his hands and feet and the spear in his side. Thomas wanted to say, because Thomas has a twin, it seems. So maybe Thomas thought Jesus had a twin brother, and he's like, eh, that might not be Jesus. That might be a twin brother. No, it's not. He saw the marks in his hands and his side. Now, I only have two paper towel rolls, so this is going to go very poorly. But um, could, I, could I get a volunteer? Do, do one of you girls want to be a volunteer for the 
Would you like to be, Mirabelle? Okay. Why don't you, can you stand up here with me so that our friends could see you? So for now, you're just going to look through this like a telescope, okay? And then uh, let's get, hmm, hmm, wow. Freya, how about you? Freya has celebrated her first communion on Easter Sunday. That's so cool. So you get this one. Okay, so now look at, so tell me what you see with that, okay? Do you see any, what do you see? Tell me something. You see people? Uh Uh-huh. Do you see your brother? Nope. He's sitting still right there. He's right there. He's not moving. You can see him. Okay. Good. Oz, you see your sissies? Cool. All right, now, I'm going to ask you to try something, okay? So now, pick one eye to look through, okay? And then you're going to take your other hand, and you're going to put your hand sideways like this. See like this? See this hand right here? Now look with your right eye, look through the tube with your, with your other eye, okay? And then you see your hand here? Okay, so close your left eye, so you're looking one-eyed through the tube. Are you looking with one eye through the tube? Okay, and then when I, when I say go, you're gonna open both eyes. Go. What do you see? Hmm. There's a hole in your hand? Whoa, did it work? Does it work? We did that a long time ago. Did you do it a long time ago? All right. Now, I know this, this will take too long if everybody gets a chance. So what you have to do is go home, unroll a roll of toilet paper in the bathroom, <laughs> blame it on the cat. No, well, actually, it, it's really hard with a roll of toilet paper because it's too short. It's kind of weird. So find a paper towel roll and unroll it in the kitchen. No, we might have a few of these. I don't know. After church, I'm just going to have these. You can play with them during the coffee hour. Um, But you end up seeing a hole in your hand, which is amazing. Thomas found that Jesus had the marks of the cross, but he was alive. And these volunteers saw a hole in their own hand, which is kind of wild. But you know what? It's kind of like having a little secret identity that you belong to the God who loved you so much that he had holes put in his hands and feet and side and he suffered death so that we could live forever with God. That's amazing. So anytime you kind of forget that or or you're having a hard time, just unroll some toilet paper or paper towel and do this and look at the hole in your hand and say, I have a secret identity. I belong to the one who had holes in his hands and that's how much he loved me. You know what's amazing too? That means that Jesus in heaven, like he still has like holes in his hands. Isn't that wild? Because he never wants to forget. Look how much I love you. Every time Jesus gives you a high five in heaven, you're like, whoa, I can see right through your hand, Jesus. That's kind of wild. Because he never wants us to forget what he's done for us. Okay, let's pray. Dear Dear Jesus, thank you for defeating death. You are risen indeed. Help us to remember. Help us to to trust. That our identity is in you. We are your beloved children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you can head on back to your seats. And we'll hear the story of Thomas now. I invite you to please stand as you are able in rehearsal of the resurrection to come. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, I got a a scary parenting story for you. Abel, I'm going to tell a story about you. Is that okay? You know how sometimes when you get really upset, especially when you were younger, you were so upset, maybe because you fell down or maybe because you had to get out of the bath, you would just stop breathing. Yeah, you get so mad, you just say, I can't even cry. You know when somebody gets hurt and then their tongue's moving, but no sound's coming out and the face turns red. Well, Abel really developed this into quite the habit for only a couple of years, it seemed. He would do this till he turned blue. You know. Yeah, me turn blue. And what would mommy do? Ah! And what would Ezra and Judah do? Ah! Yep. But Dr. Emmett would take care of you a lot of times. So when Abel would turn blue... And there was, I mean, it was, you got so used to it after a while, but it's always kind of, you can't get used to it, but it's something. Apparently this is normal, and the doctor said he'll grow out of it, which he did after like two years. And my sister called me the other day. She has her, a newborn. He, she, he's like eight months old now, and she's like, he's turning blue, and I know Abel used to do that. What do you do? So I gave her all the advice, and I was like, don't worry, they'll grow out of it. I, I don't think Abel's done it in like six months. And he did it later that week. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. He's done it at Cabela's, he's done it in homes, he's done it in front of some of you, he's done it in front of nurses. I mean, he's just, yeah, he's very, very uh, interesting. We have a phrase for it, but I'm not going to give you it. I'll give it to you later, but it's, it's slightly insensitive. So, But he, uh, he does this thing, and you're like, oh my goodness, if you stop breathing, that's it. So the first thing I told my sister the other day was, they won't just stop breathing. They'll just pass out and wake up. They don't stop breathing. So don't worry about that. Like if they go cross-eyed and they, the face turns blue and then the lips turn blue and then the tongue turns blue, just, just wait. So what can you do? <laughs> I know, you can't just wait. So here's a few things you can do to make yourself feel better while they're just doing what they're going to do. If you've got water nearby, you can get them wet and just kind of change how they feel, right? You splash some water on them. You know, you can say like, you're a baptized child of God and then you can blow on the water and then they feel that cold water. Um, you can lay them down flat, you know, like they're resting in a bed. You can talk to them and hold their hand and, you know, pet them and just you know, tell them it's going to be okay. But Emmett and I's favorite move, which made us feel better, is we basically open his mouth and just breathe as hard as we can into it. Just, just really just, and then breathe into his eyes. You know, anything you're trying to do to sort of shock the system and restart the engine. And... You just try different things, and sometimes one thing works and sometimes another thing doesn't. We got to the point where he would do it in the bath, and I'd say, oh, perfect, I can brush his teeth now without a fight, because he'll just lay there, (laughs) just brushing his teeth. It was perfect. The toothpaste was blue, he was blue, and his breath was fantastic for a couple days. Right, Abel? He's enjoying this. He's up there smiling. Okay. So it's very scary, though. You, I mean, you need breath, and you think, oh my goodness, what are you going to do if you pass out? Uh, and you end up, you know, and then it's, the, the thing you would always do right afterwards is he would kind of have this moment where he kind of came back to his senses, and he realized what was going on, and then he would just cry, and he would break out in sweats. 
and just he would just sweat. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of subtitling this the peace that passes perspiration. That <laughs> that he he's so upset he's going to just choose to stop breathing. And then once he's breathing and with it again, he just breaks out in sweat and he is ready to cuddle. And that's the best. Like if you ever had an active 2-year-old, when they want to cuddle, it's fantastic. You're like, "Okay, let's just lay on the bathroom floor and let's cuddle for a while." Um, he's not going to move. He just wants to, to be loved. He's feeling peace. But it took, it took water, it took words of comfort, and it took breath from a big brother or a dad, and occasionally others stayed in the room. Uh, it took breath to now remind him who he was and who he would come back to when he was back to his senses. And I believe this is a parallel to what's going on for Jesus' friends on that first resurrection day and in the weeks to come. Really, this is a story about life as church because the first occasion happens on the day of the resurrection, in that evening. And then, this, and then the second part of our gospel today takes place the following Sunday when Thomas is with them. And what Jesus is doing, it seems to be establishing a pattern that this is what happens when God's people stick together, when they remain together that as our gospel passage unfolds, they've got their Friday fears. Only two days previously, they'd seen their Lord and Messiah crucified shamefully in front of the crowds that were jeering at him. They thought that it was all over. A couple of them even leave Jerusalem and walk back home to Emmaus saying, we thought he was the one to redeem Israel, but we had hope. But he was crucified. Just like every other would-be Messiah. But The 11 remaining disciples, not counting Judas, are locked in this room. They're afraid. They're afraid of their own people. It doesn't say they're afraid of the Romans who crucified Jesus. It says they're afraid of their own people, the people of Israel, the Jews. And they're afraid of themselves because one of their own betrayed Jesus. And each of them knew they had fled, deserted, denied. So they're waiting in this room in fear. They're afraid of their own people. They're afraid of themselves. Is there just one rat or is there another mole among them? They're afraid of what these women were talking about, coming back from the tomb, like Mary saying, I've seen the Lord, and they think, "I, I don't know about that. They think that the women are just sort of delusional and think that, well, we are just so crushed that we're imagining we see Jesus to fulfill our our wishes. So Mary's testifying, I've seen the Lord. And she says she actually has a message from the Lord. We heard this last Sunday on Easter when Jesus said to Mary, you can't cling on to me, you can't keep holding on to me, but go tell my brothers that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God, the Son of God returning to the Father. So Mary gives this message, I've seen Jesus. Well, where is he then? Oh, uh, he said he was going to ascend to the Father. Oh, easy for you to say. So they don't believe her. They're afraid of their own people. They're afraid of themselves. They're pointing fingers. They're making excuses. And then all of a sudden, Jesus comes and stands among them. Jesus comes and stands among them. And what is he going to say? Some of those disciples, perhaps Peter, who locked eyes with Jesus in the courtyard during his trial upon denying him three times, perhaps Peter thought Jesus was going to say something other than what came out of his mouth. They're all waiting for Jesus to say something, and Jesus says, peace be with you. Which sounds very fancy and biblical, but it's really just the word, hi, (laughs) hello, shalom, peace, shalom. And they're thinking, oh my goodness, peace be with you. And then he gives them a further message. He says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Ah, that's what Mary was talking about, even if she wasn't sure what she was talking about. Jesus gave her the message to say, I'm going to go ascend to my Father and yours. And now Jesus appears in this room with them and says, as the Father has sent me, so now I'm sending you. Jesus ascends in order to descend. Jesus ascends in order to descend into our hearts through faith, or in order to descend into our communities in the church. Jesus goes up 
so that he can come down. He goes up so that he can bring us to his Father. Jesus ascends to, to descend, and he gives them his very breath. He breathes on them. It literally says he breathes into them. I mean, really into them, like we're laying on the ground. We haven't been breathing, and Jesus just <sighs> breathes into them. And just as Adam in the Garden of Eden, the disciples received life. And Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, receive the Holy Spirit. And now we have that Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, drawing us into a new life on the other side of death. The Father so loved the world that he sent, that he gave his only Son. And the Son with the Father, gives the Holy Spirit so that we can descend. So that we can descend to our knees to wash the feet of those in need. So that we can descend into the lives and messes of people we love and people we don't even know. Through Jesus, we've ascended to the Father so that we can descend in mercy for those in need. Jesus says, not only receive the Holy Spirit, he says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. <sighs> receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Wow. This is not, this is more than what Jesus told Mary to do, which was, go tell them you've seen me, and I'm ascending to the Father, and, I'm, and, and, and to your Father. He's now saying, you go and speak my very words to people. You speak in my name the word of peace and the words of forgiveness. And, as the case may be, the words of no, no, no. Receive the Holy Spirit, speak in the authority of God. Oh my goodness, these disciples, like I said last week, they can't stay in the empty tomb and huddle up in safety and say, he is risen indeed, echoing from behind a stone over a grave. These disciples now, having seen Jesus, having received his spirit, must descend to the world for mercy's sake. Now Thomas wasn't there because he's not doubting Thomas, but because he's brave Thomas. He's buying groceries or something while the rest of them are locked in the room. He's always been pretty bold. In fact, when Jesus' friend Lazarus was dying and then they received word that he had in fact died, Jesus says, oh good, I'm, I'm, I'm glad this happened so that you can, you can see the glory that's going to happen. And Thomas, now hearing that they're going to head towards Jerusalem, Thomas goes, let's go with Jesus so we can die with him. And Jesus wasn't even talking about that. He was just talking about going to his friend Lazarus who lived in the suburb of Jerusalem. But, but Thomas is ready. He's ready to go. <clears throat> Until the moment came, and then he, he fled in the garden as well. But Thomas has, has rediscovered his courage. He wasn't there that first week. And he is doubting his friends. He's doubting Mary's testimony. He's doubting the testimony of all the other ten men who said, we've seen the Lord. He says, now nah, I need to see for myself. I need to touch. I need to see that it's the same Jesus, that he doesn't have a twin like I do, that it's this Jesus. All right? And, you know, it's, it's fair enough that he has his doubts about the disciples and their testimony after that Judas guy. Maybe Thomas is thinking, I don't know about you all anymore. But he says, I need to see... But what he didn't do is cut himself off from the community. What he didn't do is say, yeah, I heard Easter was great. I had other things going on that day, okay? And I'm just going to stay at home until Jesus finds me too. Why didn't he come when I was with you? I wasn't gone all week. Why did he choose that day? No, Thomas doesn't do any of that. He stays connected to the community of faith. He continues to live with them. And so he was there when Jesus came back. 
He was there when Jesus said the same sermon he did last week. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And it's not what Thomas possesses that makes him a doubter. It's not like he had some gift of doubtfulness. It's not like he was like a skeptic, like, I'm a smart guy. I'm not going to be fooled by anybody. That's not what, it's not what he possesses that gave him the moniker of doubting Thomas. It's what he lacked. And there is a difference between possessing something and not possessing something. Because when Jesus says to Thomas, don't doubt but believe, the word doubt and the word believe are the same word in Greek. It just puts a little A in front of it, like an atheist doesn't believe in God. So he says, don't be A, faithful, be faithful. Or we could say it like this. Don't be without faith, but be faithed. Have faith put into you. Be given faith. How, how, how do you get yourself some faith? If you don't have faith, you don't get it by thinking your way to the logical conclusion that Jesus must have been raised from the dead and the, Mary was right and the disciples were right and this is, this is correct. You get faith because God finds a way to pin you down <laughs> and deliver his peace to you. God finds a way to put people in your life. Um, I'm, it was a fascinating memorial service yesterday for the mother of a girl who, who spent a lot of her teenage years here in confirmation and youth group. She sang in the music team like 15 years ago. But her dear mother died of cancer far too young. And so her mother's service was yesterday, and Dennis was there, because this is like a karaoke community uh, affair, along with Eugene's theater troops and a lot of other artistic folks. Very eclectic, I gotta say. The sermons were slightly different. Um, but, but what's fascinating is I thought, um, as some people were sharing, and they would kind of talk about how they don't share the faith that Darlene, the deceased, shared. But I'm thinking, look where you are right now. I mean, Darlene's got all of you in church. Like, some of you haven't been here ever or in years. Like, look what God has orchestrated to bring you into a house of mercy and to hear that faith mattered to this one that you've loved and lost. I mean, Jesus has a way of faithing people. If they just stick around or through life's circumstances like a memorial service end up around Jesus people. It's really amazing what kinds of things can happen. Doubt is not a quality. It's, it's an absence that is filled when God's people deliver the Holy Spirit, deliver the peace and forgiveness that Jesus told us to. And Thomas goes from being doubting Thomas to making the highest claim about Jesus in all of the Bible. He says, my Lord and my God. And he just goes right there. He passes seminary in one statement. Jesus is Lord and God. And I love it. This is how Jesus works. He loves to make, to draw the biggest confessions of faith out of the biggest scoundrels. He can't wait to change Paul the Apostle's life. And Thomas, Thomas was the biggest skeptic of them all, and he loved just making Thomas wait a week, I suppose, because he knew when Thomas confesses, that is, he is going to be an unstoppable apostle. So this is, this is kind of how Jesus delights in working. And that's why he brought you here in this place. Some of you for, uh, you know, the 50th year, and some of you just for the second time. You're here, I believe, because God has orchestrated it. Lately, we've been, well, lately, it feels like forever now, but we've been talking about charting a new course and using the, the, a ship-faring theme of, of setting out wherever God would call us as a congregation. And in this Easter season now, we've moved past salvation and the storm as a metaphor, and now we're talking about sailing into the risen sun. In light of the resurrection of Jesus, what does it look like to live and to serve together? I had a seminary teacher who said, uh, he says, we're all bozos on this bus. Like, and the nice thing about bozo, it's like, it's sort of like a nice way to say that <laughs> we mess things up, you know, royally. It's like, yeah, we're all bozos on this bus. Well, it's, it's probably worse than that, but like, bozos on this bus works for me. But another way we can maybe say it for us is, we're all sinners on this sailing vessel. And this is what John's talking about, not in our gospel reading, but in our first reading from the first letter of John, which I know that's confusing, but we're moving to the first reading, also from a guy named John. And John's talking about the fellowship 
in the light. Jesus, uh, John says, if we say we have fellowship with God and we walk in darkness, we're lying and we're not doing what's true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And he goes on to, to say again what we heard in the gospel which is that in this fellowship of faith, on this sailing vessel of sinners or this bus of bozos or whatever works for you, in this community, it's one sinner telling another sinner where to find bread, right? It's it's one broken person telling another person, Christ is for you. Christ is for you. When he says walk in the light, He's not saying, by walking in the light, you'll be saved. He's just saying, walking in the light means stick around the Jesus people because they're going to lift you up when you need it. It's not the light. It's not our ability to turn the light on or to leave the dark room and walk in the light. It's not that ability that saves us because John says it. If we're walking in the light, it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. We don't produce the light. We bear the light. We receive the light in this house of mercy. So I invite you over the next few weeks on Sunday mornings to move from worship to coffee and treats, to sit around a table and and participate in crew meetings as we go a little deeper in discussing what is God's vision for this congregation? How will Bethesda Lutheran Church buck the trend of church decline in our culture? How will Bethesda be a place of mercy that brings people in, helps us connect each o- with each other in friendship, helps us to grow in our faith and go out in service for the good of others? I hope you can uh, be a part of that and help us to see what God's doing in this place. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you that I'm not a doubting Thomas, but it's not because I figured out how to walk in the light or because I thought my way to your truths. It's because you put people in my life to put faith into me, to deliver your Holy Spirit through the words of peace and pardon. And I pray that each person in this room would know how you speak to them through my lips and through the lips of fellow brothers and sisters in faith. Help us as Bethesda to walk in the light as you are in the light, to have fellowship with one another in the light. We have lots of things to hide, but in this place, Lord, we need not fear. We need not lock the doors. We need not hide from you, for we could not if we tried. Thank you for delivering your peace and pardon faithfully as this community meets together and send us out from this place to chart a new course so that this neighborhood would have a beacon of light and a house of mercy for all God's children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
worship continues with the gathering of our tithes and offerings. And while the ushers are bringing the plates around, I want to pass along a few community notes. As I said, we have the coffee hour. There is Sunday school upstairs for fifth grade and under. And then crew meetings in the parish hall. Get, get something to eat and drink, have a seat, maybe mix it up a little with maybe usual table partners. And then a few minutes after uh, we, we go, I'll get on the microphone and deliver some instructions for, uh, for discussion prompts. Later this week, we have men's breakfast this Saturday morning at 8 a.m. It's very simple, men. There's four or five tables of guys. If you come before 8 o'clock, you can drink coffee and maybe pitch in in the kitchen with last-minute things. And uh, we eat from 8 to 8.45-ish. And then uh, some of us can stay and clean up and others move on to the food pantry or go about our day. Uh, if you haven't come before, couldn't be easier just uh, other than waking up at, you know, in time for an 8 a.m. breakfast on a Saturday. So, and, you know, my boys come, so it's, it's not just for, you know, retired guys. Uh, anybody can come, any age. The following Saturday on April 20th, we're going to have a spring cleaning work party here. More details are coming, but essentially we'll uh, put together some jobs that we can do indoors, outdoors, kitchen, stage area. There's a lot of kind of nooks and crannies around here that we can uh, spruce up uh, in this new season. Uh, also want to wish uh, David Mullen a happy 80th birthday this coming Saturday at Men's Breakfast. It'll be his 80th birthday, so congratulations to you, Brother David, and uh, God's blessings to you, okay? Yeah. Uh, and then one last thing, it was in the email that went out, but um, when you head in for coffee, take a look at the food pantry on the left. Um, we've given away a lot of food over the last couple of weeks, and, um, and so it'd be great to restock it with some really, um, uh, there's a lot of restocking we could use. So we're going to give more details and suggestions in our publications to come, but maybe give that a look and see if, uh, if you've got uh, something you can offer. Anything else that we should highlight while we're here? I invite you to please stand and sing as the offering is brought forward. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Receiving God's goodness, responding to Christ's grace, and rejoicing in the Spirit's gifts, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord Jesus, your church cries out and you listen. 
As you drew near to your disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and our course is charted in the direction you would have us go, in witness to your mercy and love. God of grace, your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide and protect police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders who work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for peace, for justice, for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially those in our prayers, both written in our newsletters and bulletins and those written on our hearts. Names of dear ones who we call aloud or lift up at this time. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O Lord, for the lives of those who now rest in you. And we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Passover Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and Thomas and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as the servers come forward. For those worshiping online, this is the body of Christ given for you, and this the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. We sing the first two verses of this sending song. Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.